Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we are playing The Vermander Curse. Now, The Vermander Curse is the new game by the creator of The Man in the Window. He makes these very unique type of horror games with very particular looking characters and very peculiar gameplay mechanics. For example, in The Man from the Window, if you remember guys, we had to basically find a hiding place for both the mother and her daughter so that when the man broke into the house, he wouldn't find them. I don't know what The Vermander Curse has in store for us, but it's only a few days old. It's the latest game from this developer Z Technician, so let's play it, let's find out what the Vermander Curse is all about, and yeah, see if it stacks up to the man of a window. Start new game, yes, in we go. I don't know who that guy by the fireplace is. Maybe the guy responsible for the curse. We've got a very strange looking woman coming in, she's called Hannah. You wanted to see me, Mr. Vermander, sir? Very ominous, <laughs> look at his face! That's funny. JP Vermanda. So this is Vermanda. Hannah, why aren't this month's profits as high as last month's? I've been looking over that piece of paper you gave me earlier, and I don't think all the numbers are on it. I can't make head or tails out of a dang thing. They raised the threshold on how much you need to donate in order to give your tax deduction, remember sir? They did what? When was this? Sir, I've been reminding you about this for the last eight months. But it's actually fine though, you still end up saving more money than if you didn't get the deduction so, with the good lord as my witness, I am being swindled, I will not stand for this. No one gets over on JP Vermanda, no sir, not now and not ever. But sir, now then, where have I been donating all my hard earned money to again? The hospital sir. Hospital? Which one? There's only one in town sir. The only hospital in this godforsaken backwater town, and they still have the nerve to swindle me out of my money. Hmm. Well, I know exactly how to handle a situation like this. Prepare the ritual, Hannah, and go fetch me my robes. Oh, he's kind of a creep, man, doing rituals and stuff if he doesn't get his uh, his tax money deducted properly. The ritual, but Mr. Vermanda, sir, please. This is entirely uncalled for. The people in that hospital have done nothing to you, sir. Besides, the difference in profits between this month and last month is only about 1% less, sir. That's nice and all, Hannah, but I don't remember asking. Now go, we don't have time to waste. Notify me immediately when everything is ready. Ah, uh, okay, sir. <laughs> He's such a, a douchebag, isn't he? He's like a penny-pinching kind of like money grabber. With a satanic side, by the look of it, who can do rituals. Wow, that is a character design. This is Nurse Morton. He says, hello? Hello? Is anybody home? I hear, I hear. Give a gal a minute. So who are these characters? So we've got Nurse Morton and then this is the receptionist. What is she? Kind of like a um, an anteater? I think so. Dr. Eda. Yeah. Oh, hello there, Dr. Eda, I presume. That's me. Who's asking? Fantastic, I'm Morton, the nurse whose transfer request you received. Transfer request? What in the world are you talking about? You aren't aware? Surely you've read the email concerning me. We don't get no regular internet out here, sonny boy. Only thing we get out here is the old satellite connection. And we ain't got that either. But, if you're here to help, then I ain't about to complain. You got a lot to learn, so you better pay attention. Because I'm only saying this once. I'm all ears, Doctor. Alright, here we go. When the patients come in, I write the information down on this here clipboard. Completely lost her voice there. <laughs> just reading that kind of in my own voice. Wouldn't it be better to use a computer instead? No. So we have to write their names down, or the names get written down when a patient comes in. I'm guessing these are like gameplay mechanics. The waiting room is over here. Ain't much to say about it. All the magazines are older than I am, and ain't none of them worth reading no more. Oh my. So the patients will wait in the waiting room, then they go through, I guess, to their respective rooms. We got eight rooms. Three are occupied and the rest ain't. Mr. Lang Boyd is over in room 6A. He had a pretty bad back injury, but we fixed him right up. Miss Tammy Giles is in room 4A. She needed one of them teeth pulled and we ain't got many options for anaesthetic. 
so I gave her some of that old-fashioned medicine I keep under the sink. She'll be a little ditzy for a while, but everything else went smooth as silk. Impressive. There's a woman in 1A2. Poor thing cut her hand real bad on her job, then tried to hide it. Her boss found out and sent her here. I ain't managed to figure out her name. So I wrote her down as Jane Doe and patched her up. I'm doing her voice really badly, by the way, guys. It fluctuates, and I don't know what accent. I haven't decided on one. Maybe I should just scrap the voice. Ah, a mystery. I wonder who she is. We ain't known to ask too many questions around here, Mr. Morton. We're here to help. Got it. Understood, Doctor. We got two bathrooms, an operating room, and something like a kitchen. Oh, excellent. The lights in here don't work half the time. We keep our medicine supply in the OR, but most of the bottles are empty because the budget ain't paying to refill them. Well, that's not really good. It's a hospital, guys. <laughs> Always have full medicine bottles. And there ain't nothing ever in the fridge, so don't even bother checking. Oh, does anything in this hospital function as intended? Not really. And that's about it. Let's head on back to the front desk so we can get you signed in and start your first shift. All right. This is a lot more, um, I guess, cinematic, <laughs> if that's the right word, than the previous game, The Man in the Window. That old sign-in sheet is somewhere over there. I suggest you go ahead and start searching for it yourself. I ain't about to come look for it. Understood, Doctor. I'll uh, find it. In the meantime, I'd better go make the rounds and check up on the patients. Come and get me if you need something. All right. I guess she's all right, friendly enough. Oh, wait. So we're playing as a doctor now. I thought we'd be playing as uh, this dude over here. This nurse. Look at his piercings. He's like a like a rocker guy or something. But no, we're playing as the doctor. And look, if we look down, we can actually see her snout and everything. She's like an anteater. Uh, what did I have to do again? Do I have a flashlight or anything? So this is like the waiting room. She said to make her rounds, I think. So let's go make the rounds. There you go. Just click on the doors to open them. Okay, 1A. Look at this thing. What is this, like an octopus? How are you doing, dear? Uh, this is Jane Doe. Okay. Hand is fine, no? You ain't got nothing to worry about. It'll regrow back good as new. I guess she's an octopus, so that makes sense. Good. Thank you. You are most welcome, dear. Try to get some rest and I'll check back in later. Yes, yes. Good, yeah, you get some rest in there. It's now 1.17 p- oh no, 9.18 p.m. Wow, the time is actually ticking up. We better make our rounds quickly. Just in case there's a time limit. No one in this room. So we'll leave that. I'm about to close the door behind us. What about this one? This is just a bathroom. So I won't go in there yet. No one in there. 4A has got someone, yeah, it's got this woman in. That's an axolotl, I believe. I think that's cause some kind of like mute creature. How are you feeling, dear? Hey, Dr. Eda, what are you doing here? So she's called Tammy. Still ain't sobered up yet, huh? Nope. That's fine, dear. At least that tooth ain't gonna bother you. No more. Just give it some time and try to get some rest, okay? Okay. Now you just rest, Tammy. You look like you need to have a rest. I'll leave you in there. No one there. And... Oh god, it's like FNAF. <laughs> That's kind of scary. Demonic. Everything alright in here? I'm fine, Doc. Matter of fact, I feel like I could walk out of here right now. <laughs> oh. See, he can't even laugh without it hurting him. This is exactly why I said, Lang, baby, please stay off the roof. It's dangerous. We can pay someone else to clean the gutters. But did he listen? No. He waited until I left for work and then tried to get up there himself. One little gust of wind and the next thing you know, bam, straight into the hedges. I know, I know, I could have done it if a wind hadn't picked up. That's not the point. You shouldn't have been up there in the first place. Doctor, can you please give this man something to fix his terminal lack of common sense, please? Sorry, honey, but we ain't got nothing to fix that. Now, you two try and take it easy, alright? I'll be back later on. All right, that's everyone. I'd better get back to Mr. Morton. Guys, I apologize for my voice acting, by the way. Oh, God. 
Dr. Ida. The phone started ringing while you were gone, so I answered it. And the caller won't stop going on and on and on about rituals and demons, among other things that I don't understand. I think that it may be best if you talk to her. Ugh, there's always something. I probably am annoying some people with my voice acting, but I just figure it makes it a bit more fun than if I just read it all right. Honey, honey, slow down. Ain't none of this making sense. This is Hannah again. Please, you have to get out of there right now. My boss just summoned an actual genuine demon, and now you're all in danger. Uh-huh. And who you work for again? JP the Manda, madam. Who is that, doctor? He's some rich city boy who moved up here when he inherited his family's estate. A lot of folks around here have to pay him rent just because his family owns the land. Yes, that's him exactly. I don't know all of the details, but there's a blood pact and a demon and a curse and all kinds of other stuff. You need to leave now. Once the clock strikes 10, you won't be able to leave. Look, it's almost 10 o'clock now. I can see it up there. Honey, that's less than two minutes. Ain't no way we're getting everyone out of here that fast. My goodness, I didn't expect the stakes to be this high on my first night. But I'm committed at this point. Is there anything we can do to help in our situation? I did go snooping in a few old journals kept by the Vermanders. Based on what I've read, if you can make it to sunrise, the demon will leave. But there's a bunch of rules that you need to follow in order to keep yourself safe. Ah, so this is where we're going to learn how to play this game. For example, every hour until sunrise, the demon will enter the place it was summoned to. It will travel down the nearest hallway in search of blood, specifically your blood. Its own rules prevent it from opening doors to search for you, so keep those closed. What room are you both in right now? The reception area. You'll need to keep that in mind, all right? When the demon arrives, make sure you're all in the same room as when the ritual started. If someone isn't, the demon will know, and once it knows where someone is, closing the doors won't stop it. Right, so we have to always be back in this room when the demon shows up? If you're ready, I can tell you what to expect once 10 o'clock hits. I ain't about to let no demon run roughshod over my house of healing. Just tell me what we need to do, honey. Okay, here's what's gonna happen first. The demon places a lot of emphasis on windows for some reason, right? It will try its best to open up windows around itself. You're going to need, and I cannot stress this enough, you're going to need to close any and all windows before the hour is up. Leave one open, the demon gets stronger, and you don't want that, all right? If you finish with everything you need to do before the hour is up, try staring at a clock. I'm sure it will help the extra time pass faster. I'll stay on the line just in case you need me to repeat something. Good luck, and please be careful. All right, I guess. So, go and check the windows. And then close all the doors, right? Well, that window's closed. That window's closed. I just want to figure out, like, where windows are. That bathroom is fine. Um, anything in here? All of these rooms have windows, but, like, it doesn't seem like any of them are currently open. Oh, this one is open. There you go. That's closed now. Good. So, yeah, we just close the blinds. That counts as closing the windows. That one's done. There's a little TV in here. So we re we've got to remember which three rooms basically have patience and always make sure those doors are shut. Ah, I've just shut myself in the room, guys. No, this is a really bad start. I'm kind of panicking already. Right. Now, that's all closed up. What about through here? Can we go through here? No, we can't go through that. Okay, good. So all we have to do is make sure all the windows are closed and we end up back in the reception area each time, I believe. So let's close that door. Just check in this room. This room is good. All right, let's look at the clock. Do we just stare at the clock and then it time passes faster? I think we just chill now. I'll speak to this guy again just in case anything's happening. Doctor, are things usually this hectic around here? Not really. We usually ain't got no more than one or two patients in here at once. But we got three in here tonight. That's not really what I meant. Yeah. Okay, let's go. So, can we just stare at the clock for longer? 
When it gets to 11, guys, do I just, like, go around again? Is that the idea? And how long do we have to actually go for? Do we go to, like, 6? Is that, like, sunrise? Or is it going to be, like, 5 a.m.? I'm going to wait till 11, and then if nothing has happened, I'll just go around again. We'll do another check, and we'll see, like, if we can close all the windows and doors again. Because apparently can't get us when we're in here. This is the room the ritual started, so... The time was 11 p.m. All the windows had been closed, and then it arrived. Oh, here we go. So, it shouldn't be able to get any of the patients, right? Okay. So we're seeing from the perspective of the demon, and it's gonna go. And we gotta repeat that every time. It seems kind of simple, but I'm guessing it's gonna get harder, right? So that's one hour done. Here's what's going to happen next. There's something about the demon's power that resonates with TV signals, right? It will turn on any TV it can manage to gain access to. They never show anything besides static once it takes control, but that's still bad. If it happens, just turn the TV off, and that'll kick it out for a while. But don't leave any TVs that it's controlling on, alright? It won't end well. Doctor, you look tired. That's because I am. Then let me handle this hour, okay? You should rest. Ah, oh, nice, we get to take control of this guy. I don't have to do the annoying voice of that woman anymore, because, uh, trust me when I say this, guys, that hurts my throat doing that voice, and I wish I hadn't started it. Anyway... You know, I can sympathize with voice actors. We're a lot taller with this character as well. Like, the height actually changes. Right, so we got to make sure the windows are shut and the TVs are off in this hour, okay? I'm just going to keep checking constantly until the hour is up. We can see what the time is in here as well by the little digital alarm clocks. Close that. TV's off, good. So it's kind of just a game of, like, wait and see, right? Like, just biding our time. Oh, that one's off. That one's on. So we'll close that. Actually, I think there was also potentially something back here. I can't remember. She's in the bathroom this time. Hey, there's some lady in the mirror looking at me. I believe that's you, Mom. <laughs> Strange things are happening tonight, and I need you to get back to your room, please. Ha, <laughs> my bad. I'll go back now. Ah, so they can be roaming as well. And that can obviously cause problems. Because if somebody's in the bathroom, they can get caught by the demon. They all need to be back in the same room as when the night started, as we were instructed. So that's another gameplay mechanic we need to remember. Anything in the kitchen? Doesn't look like it. I think everything is good so far. OR, anything in here? Nope, no TVs, no windows in there. The demon will come through this door soon and start roaming. I'm going to return to this room and shut the door. And we're going to hunker down, wait for the top of the hour. Hopefully things go well. The time was 12 a.m. We're going to find out now anyway. All the windows have been closed. All the televisions have been turned off. What the heck? By this point, the pain meds given to Mr. Lang Boyd earlier in the day had started to wear off. Despite his wife's insistence to stay put, he went to inquire about it. And then it arrived. No! Why? I thought I checked everybody. Do I have to literally go and make the rounds every time? I think I do. No, they're a goner. So I have to check every hour as well on the patients, whether they're in the room or not. I thought if they're in the room, we're all good. On the day of his accident, Langboy's mind was not on the potential consequences of his actions. Far from it, in fact. His mind was instead on how happy his wife and children would be after he cooked their favourite dinner. A dinner that he could not afford to make, unless he used the money he'd saved by cleaning the gutters himself. Is this trying to make me feel guilty <laughs> that we got them killed? Just giving us his life story, but he was this poor father trying to do, do right by his family and stuff. The grandest intentions had now unintentionally doomed their entire family. Oh, man. Well, there we go. Oh, what was that noise, says Hannah. Please, please, tell me you didn't forget something. You can't let this thing do any more damage than it already has. 
So please try to focus. Listen to this. Here's what's going to happen this time. You'd be surprised how much the demon's powers resonate with electronics. It can gain access into the phone lines and try to gain power too. If you notice the phone continuously ringing, then that's exactly what it's trying to do, alright? Now this is going to sound crazy, but you'll need to pick up the phone and listen. Pay attention, because this part is important. If you hear anything, and I mean anything, on the other end, you've got to recite this mantra. Your presence is not welcome here. You must depart immediately. So that's what we've got to remember, guys. Don't worry, you'll remember it when the time comes. But if there's silence on the other end of the phone, then just keep quiet. Silence means it hasn't properly figured out the phone's location yet, and you don't want to give it any clues, alright? I ain't as tired anymore. You can let me handle things this time. Sounds good to me, Doctor, and I'll take this hour and I'll take the next. Okay, cool. So, we gotta listen for phones. I guess watch TVs and Windows this time, it kind of stacks up. Also, yeah, it definitely stacks up. Also speak to each patient, make sure they're okay. Hurting is a gain. Anything do, please? Do I need to get medication for this one then, maybe? So they don't get up. I think I might do. So we'll go to the medicine cabinet on the way. Just check that those are all closed. Check no one's... Oh, that's no, just the reception area. Check the bathroom again. No one in there. Good. Check 3A. TV off. Window closed. Good. Check 4A. We're all good. Let's speak to her. Gasp. Is noon already? That's midnight, darling. Oh, her. <laughs> she's alright. She's not saying anything, um, you know, like she wants to leave or anything, so we'll just leave her be. This room, of course, is going to be empty. We still need to check for the TV in the window, though. Now, I can't hear a phone ringing yet, which is good. Oh, here it is. You listen closely. You don't hear anything from the other side of the phone. So we say nothing, then. You can sense that the presence on the other end of the phone has departed. Nice. Okay, that works. And we've got this window to shut as well. Good. Right, so that's kind of uh, easy to understand, I guess. We just watch if the phones are blinking or not. Hopefully, it's only that one that we need to find. Okay, nothing here. Good. Let's check the OR. We might need to get some pills. The pain meds are kept here. Pick up the meds. Right, we need to give this to the patient. So let's go back and give this to our patient. Is it in 2A? Nope. Here. Here. This will help with easing the pain. Yes, good. Okay, good. Sweet. Right, let's go back. We've done everything, guys. We can go and rest. Hopefully, we've uh, actually sorted the patients out with their pain meds now. So, um, you know, everything should be hunky-dory. This doesn't seem to speed things up that much, but there we go. Right, the time was 1am. All the windows had been closed. All the televisions had been turned off. And all the phones were answered correctly. And then it arrived. Oh, here we go. So, is anybody going to get up this time? I really hope not. I think we've already screwed up the game. I'm guessing, like, the other games in the series this developer makes, there are multiple endings. Because this seems quite a long game, I'll probably only go for one ending in this video, guys. But if you guys enjoy this video, then I will probably do a follow-up video where we look at the story and all endings. Okay? So just a heads up there. We'll just cover the one ending we get in this video. Here's what's going to happen next. The demon will try to draw power from any lights it can gain access to, right? You know it's inside a room trying to siphon power when the lights start to flicker. When it happens, all you need to do is enter the room, close the door, and shut your eyes for a few seconds. Okay, so we go inside the room with the flickering lights and shut our eyes. Close the door, of course, as well. You're really going to need to use the space inside your mind to focus for this to work. You know it'll work when the lights stop flickering. And make sure you do it right, okay? If you don't, then... Well... I think we all know what happens if we don't do it. So we're playing as Nurse Morton, I think he was called again now. See you later, we're going to do our rounds. I can hear a TV already, I think. Yep, here it is. Let's just speak to this character. 
<sighs> They're all right, good. You just uh, chill there then, you don't need any medication. Oh, we got a phone to answer. You listen closely. Oh, we can hear someone breathing. We need to recite the mantra. You can sense the presence on the other end of the phone has departed. Nice. Correctly done, I think, then. Right, let's go. We've only got 50 minutes, I think. Nothing there. Got to make sure there are no flickering lights, of course. None in the bathroom. Check this room. Check the window. Good, everything's good. Check the bathroom. No flickering lights, good. Check 5A. No TV on, good. 6A. We're still good. It's actually going really well. There's going to be some flickering lights sometime though, right? Because that's one of the mechanics. So one of these rooms has got to have flickering lights. Looks like we're all good there. Kitchen. OR. Oh, here we go. This has got flickering lights. So what do we do to shut our eyes? How do we shut our eyes? Oh. Hold space. Has that done anything? I think that sorted it. I don't know how long we're meant to hold our to hold off for there. Also, I don't think I've seen... I don't think I've spoken to the Axolotl character. Where was she again? Where is she? She's gone somewhere. I don't know where. Has she gone into this room? She's in here. What the heck? Oh, man, we're running out of time. Go back to your room now. Hello, Mom. This is the waiting area. Strange things are happening tonight. And I need to get you back to your room, please. Huh? My bad. I'll go back now. Yeah, go back now, man. That's so dumb. Right. Make sure all the doors are shut. Yes. Close this door. Yes. We just made it. I think we're good. I think we're good. Alright, guys. That was very close. But we're back in the room. It's nearly 3am. Let's see if we've done everything correctly. The time... Oh, it's... No, it's 2am. What am I talking about? The time was 2 a.m. All the windows had been closed. All the televisions turned off. None of the lights left flickering. And all the phones answered correctly. And then it arrived. And yeah, nobody's like lurking about. Everyone's in their correct rooms. That was very close. Because I did just think like, where is that Tammy character? I think she's called. And then she was somehow in the patient's room. The beast is back inside. It's claimed victims, but it's not going to get any more if I can help it. Guys, we're going to get on top of this. We're going to be okay. So Hannah says, there's one final thing this demon is going to try. Ritualistic candles. It has the power to manifest them inside its area of influence. It's vital and very, very important that if you see one, you extinguish it. If you let it keep burning, the demon will be able to draw power from it. It won't try anything new after it gets to this part, so you don't have to worry about any more new rules. Oh, and I almost forgot something. This part is important too. Whatever you do, make sure you don't... What? Make sure we don't what? Oh, man. Oh, we got to get to work quickly. Let's check the patient waiting room. No one was there. Oh, here's a candle. Let's close that. How do we extinguish the candle, damn it? Have we done it? Good. TV off. The people are asleep. I don't know what's going on. I guess it's just because it's that late, right? Right, let's answer this. You listen closely. We can hear someone, so we recite the mantra. Presence on the other end of the phone has departed. Good. And this is actually harder now because there's a lot of stuff going on. Anyone in the bathroom? No. No flickering lights and no one in there. That's off. No candles. Good. Let's go. Oh, I just saw something in the window there. That's actually crazy. She asleep? Yep, she's asleep. Sleeping, sitting up. I guess some people do that. That's good. No one's in there. 
Oh, we got a flickering light, guys, and a TV on, so turn off that. Focus. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. We're good. Don't know how long we're meant to hold it for, but I just say about five seconds is good. Windows open. This is getting a lot harder now. There's lots of stuff going on. We've got to make sure we don't miss any candles as well, of course. Man, he's putting all the TVs on this time. He really likes watching that static. Anything in here? Nope. Good. Come on, open. Please, please, please. Good. We're good. Anything in here? No, no candles. We're all right. I think that's everything. Let's go. We need to get back in time as well. We don't want to get caught by that demon. In. Please open. Good. Close. Wow, we had a bit of time to spare. I thought... I didn't know who that was then. That really scared me. A character in the dark. Do we have anything in this room as well? No, we're good. Close that then. Right. Hopefully, guys, we've done everything okay. I mean, I've tried. I've been around as much as I can. So we just watch the clock, wait for it to tick down. Oh, it's only three. How many hours are going to be? Like, I don't know how long this goes for. The time was 3 a.m. All the windows had been closed. All the televisions turned off. None of the lights left flickering, and all the phones had been answered correctly. All of the candles had also been extinguished, and then it arrived. So this is going well. I'm just really annoyed that we let that one dude and his girlfriend or wife get killed at the start because I didn't know at that point we had to talk to everyone to check if they need anything. I should have realized because we are a nurse doing our rounds. Just didn't think about it. Anyway, let's try and keep up the good work. I'm assuming the game doesn't end this quickly. Oh. I'm playing as this guy. Oh, so now, yeah, we don't speak to Hannah again this time. We literally just have to go and, like, speedrun it every time. Oh, here we go. We've got a uh, phone. You listen closely. We can hear whispering, so we recite that mantra. Presence has gone. We sorted that. Excellent. Out we go, then. Rush to the next room. Bathroom. Anything in the bathroom? Check, check, check. Nope. Good. So to 2A we go. And we got a window open. Nothing more. Anything in here? We got a candle. Man, it's really hard to extinguish the candle. You you really have to kind of like look at it exactly right. TV off. Check on her. No, she's asleep. Good. Bathroom? Anyone in the bathroom? No. Nope. No candles. Good. By the A. Nothing. Good. Back out we go. Shut, please. Thank you. It's 3.24. We've got plenty of time. Good. Getting good at this. We're getting very fast at going through this game now. That's good as well. We missed anything. Oh, window. Almost missed that. Good. Now we've got this room. The kitchen, which has flickering light. So we shut that door. Just close our eyes. One, two, three, four five open and sorted okay good out we go again check the OR anything in the OR nope I think we're all done guys I think that's everything so let's run back just want to check this room once more no we're good okay we need to rush get that hustle on you know we've actually got plenty of time the time was 4 a.m. All the windows had been closed, all the televisions turned off, none of the lights left flickering, all the phones answered, and all the candles extinguished. Then it arrived. So once more we're going to watch it, like, stalk the corridors. I feel like there's going to be something that trips us up soon if we're not careful, like, one of the characters will wake up, we have to check a room twice or something. Because it does give us enough time now we can, like, speed through it to do that, to check rooms twice. So I feel like something's gonna happen like that where a character will wake up or something and if we don't go and see to them, like something bad could happen. We're good. We need to really speed through this. We're good. Bathroom? Anything in the bathroom? No. That's good. Nothing in there, nothing in there. Wow, nothing's actually going on this time. Oh, 
We've got a flickering light and a phone. That's good. Now let's answer the phone. You listen closely. We can hear breathing, so we need to recite the mantra on that basis. Presence has gone. Nice. Are you okay? Yeah, you're asleep. Good. Okay, I can hear a TV somewhere. Can't see any candles flickering lights in the bathroom. Not a lot seems to happen in the bathrooms, I'll be quite frank. That's up. On. Shut that. Good. All good, guys. All good. Oh, there's a candle over there by the door. We need to make sure we knock that out. Nothing in there. I'll do that last for candle by the door. Anything in the OR? Nope. I think that's it. Come on. Alright, that's out. We extinguished it. Oh my god, it's in here. What the heck, man? What do we want to do? Do we want to check the rooms? It's in here somewhere. It, I don't know why we just saw it in the building, guys. I feel like I've done everything right. I'm just double checking that there's not like a window open or anything now. No, we're good. I don't know how it got in here. Either way, we're going to go back because we don't want to be out in that corridor at the end. So let's check. No, we're all good. All right, let's just count down the hour. I don't know why the demon was in there then. He just popped around the corner. You probably saw him. Although this game is very dark. I'm going to have to brighten the video for sure so that you can see properly as it's dark for me on the screen. But I feel like that's scripted and it's meant to happen. Maybe it's because the guy got killed earlier. Who knows? We'll have to just wait and see if anything happens now. We've got to 5. This could be actually where the game ends. The time was 5 a.m. All the windows had been closed. The television's turned off. None of the lights left flickering, the phones had answer been answered correctly, and candles extinguished. The sun began to rise on our little town, ah, and the demon could not stay in this world much longer. It had already fulfilled its side of the Amanda Pact. So it departed from this world, back from whence it came. Dr. Ida and Nurse Morton had both survived. They were finally safe. So... It fulfilled the blood pact, it got its kill. So uh, I think the demon had successfully completed its mission. However, however what? We're gonna see that like douche from the start of the Amanda guy. An investigation into the two different disappearances that happened that night was launched. An investigation that was compromised by the Amanda's influence. So he basically paid off the police. Despite their innocence and the lack of evidence, both Ida and Morton were charged and convicted in connection with the disappearances. Without Dr. Ida to run things, the hospital that had faithfully served the community for decades now stood abandoned. Unable to get the medical help that they so heavily relied on, the town suffered. But none had suffered as much as Morton's daughter, who suddenly had to grow up without her father. I wonder if that's the, um, the daughter from the first game, but I think they were rabbit characters, actually not mouse characters, but it could be. She was alone in a completely unfamiliar town, all through no fault of her own. This game just tries to make us feel like bad <laughs> about everything, doesn't it? Like if we, if we screw up, we're made to feel bad about it. The only other person who knew the truth was Hannah, but soon she too suddenly disappeared. Her boss had her uh, taken care of, I think. And upon searching her home, the only thing that was found was a strange lit candle. In the end, JP Vermander got to keep his extra 1%. And that's all that mattered. Yeah, that money grabber. Screw him. So I think we got like a bad ending there, right? That has to be a bad ending. Yeah, we've got one star at the bottom now. I'm guessing there's multiple endings, probably two to three endings, right? I remember the man from the window had like, I think I had like three endings. So I think guys, what I'll do is leave it there for now. But I'll come back and do a video looking at all the different endings 
and you know the story explained because you guys tend to like me doing those videos I've noticed that the best views on my channel are always the story explained videos and then the let's plays so it's kind of nice to play through the game show you guys what it's about and then expand upon it in a future video so that'll be probably coming to you in the next week or so when I can get to it but for now this has been the Vermanda Curse a fun little game you know definitely an interesting little concept there it wasn't like super exciting the gameplay did get quite repetitive but for a free indie horror game you know it was quite a fun experience and you know worth playing on the channel today if you enjoyed the video of course leave a like comment down below and of course subscribe for more videos just like this one and I will see you all on the next one